Hope you're all doing well. It's race week and Ferrari are keen to impress at their home Grand Prix, the Temple of Speed, with major upgrades expected to give them the edge over their rivals on home turf. Before we discuss Ferrari's upgrades, the Autodromo Nazionale Monza track has been resurfaced and work on the track ended early this month. As is usually the case with newly laid asphalt, the surface is smoother than its predecessor and darker in color. The darker surface also will pick up more heat from the sun and could reach highs of over 50 degrees Celsius. Ideally, teams will want to run a one-stop race because the time needed for a pit stop at Monza is one of the longest of the year, especially relative to the speeds the cars reach on track. However, that might not be possible this year. The effect the new surface has on tire behavior over a long run, both in terms of performance and of degradation, will be a major part of the testing the team's conduct on Friday. Ferrari's last upgrade package at Silverstone produced bouncing in high-speed corners, the upgrade didn't work as desired, and the Scuderia has been scrambling ever since to eradicate a bouncing issue. After a long process of analyzing data of what didn't work last time round, Ferrari is introducing a new raft of upgrades, including a new floor coming in time for the Italian GP this weekend. The team hopes with the upgraded floor, the bouncing will be fixed and go back to adding more downforce on the SF24. In Zandvoort, the Scuderia ride height was adjusted to mitigate its bouncing issues, which in the ground effect era of F1 means sacrificing raw pace. The data from the wind tunnel looks promising, though, at least according to Fred Vasseur. The Ferrari team principal believes there is performance waiting to be unlocked. Not only is this relevant for the upcoming nine rounds, but also for the 2025 car, which Vasseur insists is progressing well. Mercedes, on the other hand, saw a drop in performance, finishing 7th and 8th. Mercedes team boss Toto Wolff has indicated that bad setup decisions led to an unexpectedly dismal results in the Netherlands. Speaking at the Dutch Grand Prix, Mercedes trackside engineering director, Andrew Shovlin, stated that lack of rear grip has been the key factor for Mercedes' struggles, which led to higher degradation than their competitors and forced them into a two-stop race. Mercedes will be working hard to ensure that isn't the case this weekend in Monza. Horner reckons that Red Bull's rivals have generated performance gains in the critical area of front-wing design, while his own team has perhaps neglected the space. Horner highlighted the distinctive approach taken by McLaren and Mercedes in this regard. I think that the way the front wings are being used are quite different, he noted. If you look at the front wing angle of McLaren and Mercedes, they're very, very different. Very different to the rest of the grid. Front wings and their inherent designs and structures have been a hot topic this season. Williams wanted to replace Logan Sargent with Liam Lawson, but Red Bull also need a reserve driver on standby if anything unexpected happens to their drivers. So Vowels decided on Franco Colapinto, who is sixth in the Formula 2 standings, as the replacement for Logan Sargent. Alpine have entered the hunt to recruit the in-demand Adrian Newey. The battle for his signature has long been predominantly between Aston Martin and Ferrari, but it seems he has additional options too. Newey has held pretty extensive talks with Flavio Briatore, who recently joined Alpine as their executive advisor. Like and subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in.